you know, just listening to all of those options, not even understanding half of it, I'm feeling overwhelmed. I, I can't imagine what someone who's just found out that they have cancer, uh, I, I can't even imagine what they must be going through because they're getting saddled with all this information that they have to go through for something that, you know, that's affecting you know, their ability, their, their own belief as to whether or not they're even going to live through this. Well, that's where I was, Frank, and that's one of the reasons, one of the primary reasons I wrote my book. Can we talk a little bit more about proton beam treatment? Because uh -huh. that, my understanding is that's the one you chose. That's the one yeah. you went with. Okay, so let's start off with what is proton therapy? How does it compare with other treatments? Who turned you onto it? And why did you choose that one Can, amongst all those other options? Well, um, when I was diagnosed in August of 2000, uh, there was only one place in the world where you could be treated with protons, and that was Loma Linda University Medical Center in Southern California. And uh, as you'd probably guess, there was very little information available uh, at that time. Uh, and while I was doing my research, I had uh, stacks of information that I had downloaded and printed in my office on each of the other alternatives, and I think I had three or four pages that I had uh, come across uh, with regard to this proton beam. And what um, what caught my attention when I stumbled on this treatment is uh, the fact that um, mechanically it, it destroys cancer the same way conventional radiation destroys cancer. Um, it enters your body. It uh, it damages the DNA of the cancer cell um, along with the DNA of the healthy cells. Um, but cancer cells cannot repair themselves. So essentially what you're doing is you're programming the cancer cells to die. And over a period of one to three years after you're treated, all those cancer cells die and they're, and they're gone and, and, and you get on with your life. Um, now, the difference between proton beam radiation and conventional X-ray radiation is fundamentally this. When X-rays enter your body, this is conventional external beam radiation. When x-rays enter your body, they essentially cook everything in the path. It's like a bullet coming into the body where it destroys everything on the way in and then on the way out. Well, with radiation, it radiates everything on the way in. And ra with conventional radiation, it's at its maximum intensity as it enters your body. It goes through the tumor and then it passes out of your body. With proton beam radiation, what they do is they take uh, the proton particle, which is the, uh, it's a subatomic particle, but it's the largest particle in an atom. They strip uh, um, hydrogen from, they strip a proton from hydrogen gas. They put it into a particle accelerator. Uh, and in the old days, these things were as large as a city block. And they uh, speed it up by running it around uh, with electromagnets and speed it up to about three quarters of the speed of light. They run it into vacuum tubes and then through focusing devices, and then they deliver it to your body. Well, these particles, when they enter your body, come in so fast that they tend not to collide with healthy bones, tissue, organs on their way to the tumor. But when they slow to a predetermined speed, they release all their energy right at the tumor volume, and then there's a zero exit dose. So you can imagine the difference between conventional X-ray radiation and proton beam radiation in that uh, one tends to do a lot of collateral damage, depositing radiation on healthy tissue, bones, organs, etc. The other tends to come in and just do damage to the, the cancer. The analogy I use in my book is it's like the difference between a smart bomb and a cluster bomb. Smart bomb can be delivered right down the chimney of a house to destroy a house, whereas a cluster bomb destroys the whole neighborhood. And when the neighborhood happens to be the part of the male anatomy that's around the prostate, well, that's something you um, you want to pay close attention to. Something you said there that I didn't know, and that is cancer cells cannot repair themselves. That's correct. So if you attack a cancer cell, it's not like it can heal. It's not like it can come back. That's right. So are you able to explain to me when they say that when someone says, oh, the cancer has come back? Oh, sure. Um, uh, it, you have to put it in context. If you're talking surgery, as an example, um, 
uh, you're oh, oh. talking about the fact that, let's say, we're talking surgery for prostate cancer. Um, a lot of people are uh, under the belief that if I have my prostate surgically removed, then my cancer is uh, guaranteed to be cured. And, uh, and that's not a true statement. And, and the reason is because um, even with early stage prostate cancer, there is some reasonable probability that microscopic prostate cancer cells have escaped the prostate gland and are in the margins or in the prostate bed. That doesn't mean metastasis to different parts of the body. It doesn't have to be in the lymph nodes, whatever. But it can be in the margins, can be in the prostate bed. So if the prostate is removed and these microscopic cells gain a foothold, then you have a recurrence of your cancer. And the same thing can happen with, with radiation. However, you have the added advantage with radiation of the fact that when they treat you with radiation, they typically treat the prostate, the capsule, the local seminal vesicles, and a margin around it. So if there's cancer in the margins around the prostate, when you're treated with radiation, such as proton beam radiation, they're destroying cancer in the margins as well. Now, what are the side effects that are associated with proton beam therapy? Well, um, with with all forms of treatment for prostate cancer, you can expect um, uh, some probability of side effects. With with surgery, uh, the statistics, published statistics, show that roughly three out of four men are left impotent, and uh, somewhere in the range of 20 to 40 percent are left um, uh, incontinent without bladder control. And there are other side effects as well, strictures and and, um, and uh, rectal damage and so on. With uh, with conventional radiation, um, the uh, incidence of impotence and incontinence is less than with uh, with surgery, probably half to two thirds uh, uh, as many incidence of impotence and incontinence. Um, but with proton beam, it's even significantly better than that. Um, I did a survey of, of my my members uh, about a year ago, and ninety five percent of them reported that the quality of their life was uh, same as or better than before treatment. Uh, a very small percentage reported uh, any changes in sexual function, and most of the, those people that are in that category uh, indicated that uh, uh, erectile dysfunction medications helped them out. And none of our members reported a problem with uh, with bladder control. So the the, the difference I think is is uh, is dramatic in terms of quality of life uh, issues after treatment when you choose a treatment that is so specific as proton beam radiation therapy. Okay, um, I'm a little confused on something. Mm-hmm. It sounds like out of the different treatments out there, proton therapy is one of the better ones with the least side effects. Mm-hmm. The question I have is, why is this not more popular? <laughs> uh, there, it's a good question, and there are a couple of reasons. Uh, one is that um, in order to uh, deliver protons, you have to build a, an extremely expensive facility. Uh, it costs nowadays uh, roughly $200 million to build a proton treatment center. And you need uh, a footprint, roughly uh, half a city block, three stories high. Uh, where I was treated at Loma Linda University Medical Center in California, this facility is buried underground. So you have to go down three stories in order to be treated. Uh, so it's extremely costly. Uh, the other thing is that the, because the facility is so costly and because it needs a large staff of people to run it, um, the treatment costs more money. And um, there is resistance by some insurers to uh, paying for this because they uh, they can claim that statistically you're not necessarily curing the disease any better than that you're curing disease with some of the other treatment modalities. Uh, but what they fail to take into consideration is the quality of life issues after treatment. So if you're a male and you're in your 40s, 50s, and even 60s or 70s, um,